everybody. Thank you for joining in on today's session. I'm Manjana, the design head at the Google Developer Student Clubs at Amrita School of Engineering, Bangalore. Today, we have with us Mr. Ankur Sahai, who works as UX designer too at Microsoft. He graduated from MIT Institute of Design in product design and has worked with organizations like SAP Labs, Honeywell Tech Solutions, and National Design Business Incubator, to name a few. He is a passionate designer and problem solver who has worked on projects ranging from cloud platform solutions to consumer products like Microsoft Teams. He is currently reimagining some of the fundamentals of search in MS Outlook. It's a pleasure to have you here today, and we're excited to learn from you. Over to you, Ankur. Thank you, Anjana. Uh, I'll start fighting my screen. Uh, let me once you can see it. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Can you see a blank white screen? Yes. Perfect. So first of all, thank you, Amrita College of uh, Engineering, uh, for inviting me to talk to some of the youngest and sharpest future builders of the nation. Uh, so I have divided the session in four phases. Uh, one is a little bit about myself, and then introduction to design and its importance. Then come some principles around design. After that, the design process itself and some common mistakes we go through. So let's begin. So yeah, uh, as Anjana said, I am Ankur Sahai, working as designer too with Microsoft IDC. And uh, apart from design, I really enjoy uh, sketching, uh, anatomy mostly, uh, cooking, gardening, and reading about history and spirituality. Uh, I have worked with organizations like NDBI, which is National Design Business Incubation, uh, People Interactive, SAP Labs, Honeywell uh, Tech Solutions, and Microsoft, where I've designed actually experiences from uh, consumer product to enterprise to you can say cloud solutions uh, and things. I'm also a visiting faculty at MIT ADT University, where I conduct interaction design courses. I recently finished with uh, MDES students uh, in product design. So today we are here uh, to talk about design. Uh, what is design? This is design or this is design, or this is design. Like literally, what is design? This is design in our everyday life, from the couch we sit, sit on, from the, to the clothes we wear, to the plates we hold, to the food we eat, to the television cinema, or content we watch, to the space we live in, to, uh, the, to the television itself, uh, to the interiors, to everything, if you see. Everything in some other other way is designed. Design at workplace goes like this. So from the from the chairs uh, we sit on, which are, which has to be ergonomic, to the space which is managed uh, among the colleagues, to the uh, devices we use, to the software inside the device we uh, we work on. Everything, if you see, is some other other way part of design. This is design business. So. You, like how people arrange stuff and how people arrange the items in a store, for example. This is an example of a very small store. And when you go to them, you are very confused how they are going to find out what exactly you are looking for. But that's how they design the space, which is managing the layout for conducting your business, running your business much better way. So uh, Paul Rand said, everything is design. Design is actually everything. So. Then the question arrives, is there a good or bad design? So here are two dustbins. Uh, can anyone tell uh, which one is better? I think the right one is better. And the reason? Because there is a pedal where it can open. On the left side, you just need to push it inside and there might be like dust on the push thing also. That is why. Yeah, yeah. So basically, both both of them are solving the purpose, which is storing garbage. But the ease of doing something, understanding and empathizing with your user that since it is a dustbin, it will be having dirt. People might not want to touch it. So putting a pedal makes it a better design. So this is another example of a tetra pack uh, of milk, if you see. So there is one way, uh, one kind of uh, tetra pack uh, you can see seal which comes where you open it and then you have to break the seal, which is that there's a plastic seal inside the Tetra Pak once you open the cap. 
and just imagine in the morning going through this kind of experience then you have to wipe the table and everything right so this is one kind of experience while second one is the moment you start opening the cap it itself unseals it this is another kind of design and this that's how it becomes a better experience and a better design so what is the definition of design steve jobs said that design is not only about how things look but how they work another famous uh, journalist on technology said to design something is to make a series of decisions that shape the experience of the user which is steven levy said and this is very important often we confuse de- between design and art the basic difference between art and design is design never ha- uh, art never has a user while design always will be having a user so design has to work art does not have to work like in the background as you can see that art piece of uh, a fork the fork won't work ever it can be considered an art piece it won't be considered ever a design because it cannot serve a user and a purpose to understand the importance of design with the help of some examples uh, let's look at three most important design principles first know your user try to understand what they like, what they feel is easy what is convenient for them uh, what a uh, direction of uh, solution they are looking for rather than going into designing something which you feel is correct you should always look into the shoes of the user try to adapt to that and then design so for example this is uh, this is uh, on the way to office right we have always come across this kind of uh, urban planning where everything works in grid structure like in this case if you see to reach the building on the left uh, both pedestrians and vehicles are expected to follow the same path which is go straight and then take a left while we have often uh, come across uh, especially people who are walking try to take these kind of shortcuts in order to uh, cash on time and energy and this is how people are then why are we designing spaces in grids why are we especially pathways in grids why are we doing that another beautiful example of similar kind is central park new york, uh, new york city this is the first plan of uh, central park new york nyc and the park was built in the same fashion with a lot of grids and uh, like everything was like the way we usually urban plan things but later they realized that people are not uh, are using these uh, you can say grid paths people are making their own paths and so they were forced by by the use by the usage pattern to redesign the map of the uh, of the of the park by understanding and mapping the walking pattern of the visitors and this is the new map which looked like which became very organic people used to uh, go there enjoy otherwise the earlier one it, it was a park it was a natural place but still it never felt that i'm in a natural space and so it is very very important to understand how users are going to use it that then forcing an idea on them another example uh, oh, sorry sorry i went back so uh, this is just another example let's go through this this is a ct scan uh, machine created by british engineer godfrey uh, of emi i think emi laboratories in 1972 how many of you have been through a ct scan like anyone among you have been through a ct scan great yeah, yeah. yeah somebody said yeah even the mri is also almost similar to this right yeah so uh, if you have been through this kind of experience then what, can you tell uh, us like what is the most annoying part or disturbing part about this entire test experience uh what i feel is like when you go inside like mm-hmm. there are uh, i'll tell about mri because ct scan i i went uh, like a few years back mri i have been to recently like i am actually confined to like i have a fear of confined to spaces they send you inside right so it is a little bit disturbing if it if it is a little bit enclosed so that's what i felt 
yeah also you like if you go to city city scan uh, for a city scan then you will notice there is a like there is a crazy sound uh, which is very yeah high. the sound as well yeah and it creates very disturbing experience for people now what happened once and mr godfrey who is the creator of this particular machine he was once visiting a hospital and he saw uh, this scan uh, facilitator was trying to drag a kid to the machine later he found it's a very regular thing that kids are scared of getting to the you know, getting the test done now imagine this kind of experience like there is a machine which works 100% but if a kid like if the patient doesn't reach the if the patient doesn't is not able to conduct the test itself then the machine fails finally you are not getting the test done correctly right so this is the problem and here we see that the machine functions 100% to the purpose and still it is failing only if it gets a chance to scan successfully then only it can be uh, it can show a correct result so what mr godfe uh, did after that he was very confused and he didn't he didn't know initially how to solve this problem how to get the kid to the scanning table so he, then he talked to some designer some psychologist and he changed the appearance of the space completely to a theme park and he he asked uh, different laboratories to do all these kind of settings somewhere it was a theme park somewhere it was something like an aquarium or anything and then children were to like kids who were uh, going to take the uh test they were initially told the story a uh, like small story you will be going inside there will be a jungle and you have to sleep and you have to like there will there was a small story told to the kid and kids were then easily going to take the test it it completely changed the way kids were reacting to it because there was already a theme of jungle so there is always uh, there is all uh, already uh, an expectation of some kind of weird sound something will be there which is not regular so that's how we need to empathize with the user and try to understand who our users are now second principle is um, attention to details we have we all have used uh, google maps if you go and use google map in any other country they will tell you uh, take this road say for example take uh, outer ring road uh, from till uh, then at the what is that the silk board take a right and then you proceed towards korvangla junction or whatever that's how they say but when google team google map team when when they were pr proposing to uh, scale uh, this uh, the, this particular product to india they first came they talked to users they try to understand how indian users actually uh, navigate or help in navigation with each other so they found a very particular and peculiar thing about indians that they always have some reference point for example they will be like okay take a right there will be a neem tree or something or a temple or a school from the school you take a right and then you'll find a police station after the police station there will be another some small shop panwala shop or something from there you take left or something like that and here that's what we see that they have you see pass by sanju auto garage on the right so they started understanding their users and bringing those small small details to the solution which made google maps so successful in every geographical location as per the context of the user mapping their usage pattern mapping their concerns mapping their their uh, you can say requirement and third comes efforts for the user users so often uh, when we don't design something uh, with with the correct steps or we at all don't design something we just we just like uh, something is given to a dpt operator to do some some layouting and since people know photoshop and nowadays people know other uh, other design tools as well they just hop on those tools and design something without trying to understand whether it is going to be usable or not and they end up increasing the effort of the user take this example this is the butterfly ballot used in 2000 presidential election in uh, united states florida the misaligned rose featured in the 2000 election in florida was brought such a flaw uh, to to the uh, people who were going to vote that they could not understand 
which dot which button is for which candidate so this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 this is 7 this is 8 this is 9 this is 10 now they were confused that i have to go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 10 or i have to do it, go in some other way and they ended up with a bizarre they ended up voting for bush and finally bush became the president as all of us know and this misalignment actually resulted in a complete you can say disaster for the voters uh, we already saw what happened after bush became the president if a wrong person gets elected uh, then uh, basically how design can influence so many kind of decisions we we don't even think about and we don't even give weightage to and as a reason uh, we need to always take care of those small details and make this, make something which is easy to use rather than increasing the effort of the user. Now, this is another example I'm going to throw on you, uh, which is, uh, this is an example from 2017 Oscars. Uh, and if you remember, if somebody like one of you have watched it, then you, you would have remembered that there were a lot of mistakes which were happening in announcing the, uh, like who is the winner and all, right? So, when my mistake, uh, if you remember, La La Land was announced uh, winner in Best Picture. And let's try to understand why these kind of problems have happened. So, when the announcer takes the card from the envelope, uh, what one is noticing, if you see, they see Oscars, the event, name of the movie, which is, or the picture, and who are the patrons or contributors for the, for the picture of movie. While... One of the most important uh, element, if you see, is completely missed, which is the award category. They don't take out the envelope completely because, you know, they, have, they are hiding their cameras and so many things. There is there's a lot of orchestration around it. While it's actually, if you see, it is actually supposed to be read as the Oscar for Best Picture goes to Moonlight. So the complete uh, hierarchy in which the, the design should be there is completely off and so we can say this could could be a better design because definitely the the event is oscar everybody knows it every time going and writing oscar oscar doesn't doesn't really help the user who is going who knows that uh, he is live among say 300 people uh, a million people are watching and uh, there's a lot of pressure so try to reduce the pressure try to understand the mentality psychology of the person who is going on the podium to to read something uh, like this, make it very easy, hierarchy, hi hierarchy, uh, hierarchical to read, right? And accordingly design stuff. So in that case, we talked about what is a good design. We talked about what is not so good design. We talked about so many common kind of mistakes which people do. Then what is the process we should follow? How we can uh, uh, design the correct way uh, always by following the design process. So I'm sure all of you have heard about double diamond method. So uh, as we know, it is a, you can say infinite process where initially we try to identify the problem and then we try to create a solution for it. And then we deliver it to, uh, to, uh, to the final user. And then we learn from those problems which are there in the solution and the process basically keeps on repeating. Let's try to, uh, understand it better in phases of discover, define, develop, and deliver. First comes the discover phase, as you can see, uh, which begins in the, at the time we receive a brief. And this is the point where we have just say a paragraph or a couple of statements, right? And from here, we have to completely diverge. So when we get a brief, what we should do is we should rip the brief into uh, three fundamental, uh, you can say, pillars, which is user, context, and problem. First, try to understand who is the user. So do a secondary or desk research on these three pillars. Try to understand who my user is. Say, for example, if you are designing a mobile app, a music, uh, you have to design a music accessibility solution. Not don't think of solution, which is an app. So music accessibility solution for old people. So here scenario, if uh, user, if you see is old people, 
or you can also say somebody who is not so technically shabby second uh, becomes the scenario scenario is technical challenge and third becomes uh, uh, the problem itself the problem is music solution right so then once you uh, once you kind of do all kind of secondary research or desk research try to find out what are the kind of market they, uh, what are the kind of products there in the market uh, what are the problems with these users try to understand everything then you set your primary research goals and then you conduct your primary research where you choose a methodology whether you want to go uh, conduct a behavioral uh, uh, behavioral research or you want to conduct anything like there are different kinds of research uh, methods choose one of them which is suiting to your design goal and then you conduct the uh, research uh, research then comes define which is phase 2 here what happens in the phase 1 we we collated huge huge number of data by talking to number of people going through number of articles or uh, whatever we get on the desk or we uh, get on in, in the primary research now if you see we have already a lot of content so obviously we have to now funnel down we have to converge and in that case what we start with is we start collating the data we we create journey maps we create empathy map service blueprint if needed then we like by after doing all of this it's it's very clear we understood that who is a primary persona who can be our secondary persona who can be a tertiary persona and then we create the personas we create user goals insights pain points we write all of this and that actually helps us in creating design directions and redefining the problem statement because initially we got a brief so for example i got a brief uh, for designing uh, uh, same example uh, for uh, for designing uh, a music accessibility sol solution for old people now after doing all the research and everything i felt that there is something about emotional end of old people even then can i somehow design a music solution which help in fighting the emo- down uh, down moments of an old person's life because they face say my research told me that they face uh, a lot of uh, scenarios like feeling very lonely or people are not there to talk to or whatever now you are basically targeting it better you are you have redefined your problem statement according to your research and then comes the third phase which is develop so now we are again on a single point which is that uh, problem uh, redefined problem statement again we have to diverge and here what we are going to do first correct this we are not dealing with ideas we are not dealing with ideas at all ideas kya hota hai ideas are like bulbs sometimes it will light and sometimes it won't light i have heard so many times the designers and design learners they say oh i have an idea i want to work on that idea why are you working on idea you are concept builder first thing you need to understand that is the difference you need to bring in your solution you need to bring in your process and in this phase basically what we are going to do so in the last phase we created design directions so we are going to create concepts for each design direction we uh, we will evaluate uh, using quick sketch wireframe there is no need to jump to uh, a figma or xd or any kind of tool in the in the first phase uh, and just use your pencil or your whiteboard do some quick things because here we have to create multiple number of concepts at least 50 to 60 concepts minimum of 50 concepts and then evaluate uh, among people call a couple of your friends and ev- evaluate your design like whichever the concept people are liking then kind of mix the best of some of them create some more concepts uh, which are like now final concepts and here you can maybe create a low fidelity ui also so that now when you are testing or and evaluating with your with, with some set of people uh, then you get much better feedback and uh, so that you can finalize on what is going to be your final concept once the third phase is done then we go to the deliver phase is where we finalize a design concept so again we are, you see we had a list of concepts and now we are tapering back so now we are again uh, converging and 
we start with finalizing a design concept then comes the favorite part which people like nowadays which is creating those final high fidelity uh, ui where most of the people sometimes begin and then you start creating your final prototype and then you test and learn so basically you test with the users and learn from the feedback you are getting through telemetry through uh, through some user feedback sessions you conduct and then again that if you see that that cycle again begins so this is where we i'm going to emphasize on what are the common mistakes which often people commit especially young designers commit uh, so first which uh, like what where they go wrong in the discovery phase phase it like some desk research people do like for example okay old people and uh, music app so like they will read about little a little about accessibility thoda sa dekh liya what are the products for uh, for listening to music for old people and like they do a very very small research and they conduct sometimes even a primary research which is very rare but when you are conducting a primary research without setting your research goal research is not going to help you because you'll go to the user you'll ask 10 questions you'll come back with the data and you'll realize i don't know how to collate it because there is no synergy in the data because i didn't have any intention a clear goal set when i when i was asking the questions so first mistakes uh, set of mistakes which happen in the first phase is this second uh, uh, phase mistakes are uh, are like this so since now we have data which i don't uh, like user has not like uh, designer has not uh, collated in a much more formatted way uh, then what happens obviously it will affect uh, the defining part of it where we are mapping the data and creating persona so that's what people do they they have the small data they kind of little bit just for the sake of it uh, map uh, the data and definitely they will go for creating a persona but it doesn't help because your research has gone wrong you have not conducted your first phase in the in the most uh, you can say a perfect way and it is going to now cascade into all the phases so then basically our people create persona they don't create again a design direction they again don't create what uh, try to understand what are the user goals yeah people for the sake of it again just put down what are the pain points and what are the insights without conducting a goal oriented research then we come to the third phase which is uh, uh, sorry yeah. to in- interrupt ankur but uh, if you don't mind can you tell it again from discover like I didn't understand a little bit. I missed the point. Okay, so uh, who's this? I'm Anirudh. Okay, Anirudh. So Anirudh, what happens uh, as uh, I told in the earlier slides? When we are, when we get a particular, say, design brief, what we are supposed to do here, what we are expected to do here is, we are supposed to rip a design brief into three major pillars. Any any design brief in the world. will be having these three constructs like this is what i follow as a process which i have uh, like recognized with time that there will always be a user say for example uh, let's talk about whatsapp right how whatsapp somebody imagined so there were users who didn't want to pay right secondly uh, the context was that frequent conversation right like you send something you get to see that thread of conversation which was missing right and it was like on the spot you can share images you can create groups like it was way beyond uh, the, the the current scenario right and the problem was definitely one of the problem was payment another problem was uh, like uh, those days there were blackberry uh, messenger kind of things which were expensive uh, everybody was uh, was not there third uh, sending picture and everything was not encrypted and so many things like so many things even if you talk about uh, designing whatsapp for uh, people who are not tech savvy so even there the problem was people don't know how to type people don't understand the language maybe uh, or maybe typing so long is uh, not great uh, experience user will be people who are not so tech savvy and it can be even old people or anything and uh, context we understand uh, not being tech savvy so basically once we understand these three pillars we rip them off completely then 
imagine the kind of solutions which they came up with for example for very less tech savvy people they came up with that record button where you record the audio and you send it you'll see the maid servants and all they use the record button much more than typing while people like us who do, who also don't like typing we use kind of a swipe mechanism right we swipe through the keyboard to type a word so see this is same problem they identified they tried to solve the problem for multiple personas primary persona people who are not tall tech savvy secondary persona little tech savvy and tertiary persona who are tech savvy but they want to do it faster because the, uh, the process of typing in that real state is very problematic so that's where uh, like what i have noticed uh, talking to so many people young, uh, and young designers i would uh, especially say they don't conduct uh, they don't uh, like focus on a problem uh, in this particular fashion like you to uh, would have noticed that when you, uh, you when you find uh, or you receive a design brief our brain is trained the way we have been uh, studying at school or college we have been trained to look of solution immediately right and that's the re reason we often jump to the solution like no matter whatever the problem i throw you you like ha ah, uska font badha denge like for example old people and music scenario if i'm talking about people immediately think okay increase the font right solution is right there but is that the really solution you want to go to right and if you don't conduct the most important phase which is discover phase in the most correct way the entire solution is going on toss trust on this so this is this was basically i uh, i was talking about anirudh and then yeah, basically yeah. your research is not conducted well then you can't define the problem better so first you, uh, you get a brief you discover the problems then you define the problem that what exactly you are going to solve right and then once you have defined the problem then you again diverge what are the range of solutions for that right so do then uh, you again here as i told since people don't conduct the first phase discover phase and define phase very well then what happens in the de develop phase they start talking about ideas like Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. This is very common. You guys would have heard among your peers and everything, right? Everyone that people burn their, uh, you can say, calorie with by approaching with an idea, and an idea is always biased, right? You often come across portfolios like I have. We review so many portfolios, and we see oh. so the person already had this concept in mind then the person created two or three bad concepts to say this is the best concept right and that concept also is not backed by uh, any data so what they do they reverse engineer everything so i have this concept now accordingly i'll find the data and accordingly i will create my portfolio see it is it is uh, easy when you are creating a portfolio but trust me any person who is a wise designer will identify how you have taken the route and second thing is uh, even if you get through an organization working in there and learning there will become pretty difficult with this kind of channel where you are not following the the path which is discover define develop and then deliver the most common thing people do is they have couple of ideas and then they jump to the fourth phase which is the favorite phase of people i would say which is chalo open figma like oh i have a project let's open figma the first thing people do is they open figma first of all leave the habit of uh, ideating on figma ideating on any software the reason is we are supposed to and trained to think with a pencil not not with a with an online tool for example i'll tell you if i have to make just a box to create a wireframe right Uh, with a pencil i'll just draw a box but when you have to do it on figma you'll first look for that particular uh, feature then you go to that tool choose square press sh press a shift drag and drop for making a square you have to go through so much of process and in that process you lose the the mentality of churning out concepts you lose the entire a baggage of what you learned from discover phase and define phase so that's the reason never go with with any online or any any such digital tool when you are exploring yeah you can use something like ipad because again it is pencil and paper kind of experience 
but don't go for a digital tool at all that's what my recommendation is and then comes the fourth thing i know we are almost out of time so fourth thing is basically deliver where yeah completely out of scope of the designer because by now you have to give the design to the product team to the development team you have to hear back and even if you realize you have designed something which is not usable which is not focusing to the problem which is not actually solving a real problem you have already missed the game as a designer because it has already gone out of your scope so yeah this is my um, uh, then say request uh, to all of you that start prioritizing the first phase the second phase third and fourth envies you guys do but first and second phase the best you do the best the result will be i remember the first thing which i was told when i went to a design school back in 2010 or something it was that a good research leads to a good design and just stick by this and the second thing which i want would like you guys to stay with is uh, will be that we design concepts not ideas always be realistic on that why because i won't hire you uh, like any of you because you could create you could think of a great idea why would i hire you you don't have a process what if it doesn't work for my product right where i have hired you to to think around because you don't have a process so people always hire a designer who has a process who can create concepts who doesn't have great ideas that's okay so that's all from my side hope it was not lot of uh, jargon and lot of uh, you can say um, concepts to hold to your brain so it was actually quite good actually i have learned a lot from this if you don't mind can you share your twitter handle or linkedin uh, i would like to be in touch with you sure link, look for me uh, i think anjana can help with the linkedin uh, i said it yeah this is my instagram we are open to questions now so if you guys have any questions please feel yeah anything yes yeah, sir uh, i wanted to ask like are you into even uh, 3d modeling stuff uh 3d modeling yeah like sometimes being a product designer trained in, uh, industrial designer so i have done all of this <laughs> in past recently i have not been doing but all these these uh, things always think of them as a as a tool to uh, you can say enhance your story a tool is never a story a 3d render is never the story you have to have the meat and the skeleton so that the makeup can actually help just the makeup can't help yeah like i was uh, like we are actually making a project like uh, it is funded by government so they were asking us to create a platform in vr where mm -hmm. students from like the target audience are students from 9th to 12th class and we have to create a i think you know uh, how germany how the education in germany works right like mm -hmm. after 10th the students have the liberty to drop out of the school and start plumbing or uh, like if they want to become a carpenter or if they want to do something else like a other desk job yeah. so uh, modi government right now has uh, issued that project so they were asking us to create a we we have virtual ex experience where uh, students can actually learn that thing uh, yeah. uh, using the a 3d modeling like how to repair a bike and all yeah. the steps and procedures so how do you think uh, we should proceed with that first uh, of all try to understand what are the prop like what are the things which are very necessary when uh, when uh, people go and learn on the field so if you can capture that in your solution the game is done right for example yeah uh uh definitely 3d view will help in rotating and everything right but small things like for example uh when uh, somebody is working in a garage they they have realistic problems like uh, uh there is a lot of uh, rust where the nut yeah. is there and you have to remove it like, usually what happens when we are teaching someone Uh, we teach in the best scenario right what is the best case scenario so okay you rotate you put the uh, wrench there and you start uh, unscrewing it but oh 
you didn't teach about realistic problem which is they will be rushed and there is a particular liquid called a dy something dy 13 or something which the, which as a mechanic you will have to add let it rest for some time then only you can unscrew so try to identify those realistic problems not just process wise problems like for for example yeah. drinking a milk you just saw drinking a milk is very easy you open the can and you put it in your glass and you drink it but the experience of opening of the opening the uh, can in the real world was not same the way it was thought and designed right so try to uh, try to address to those minute scenarios for that you'll have to visit uh, whatever the, whatever the you can say profession you are targeting into go visit take videos uh, talk to people better than talking to people observe them uh, because we always tend to ask uh, very leading questions i would uh, request everyone to read about uh, how to create a questionnaire and how to conduct research because that in itself is a very huge uh, you can say uh, fundamental in itself like what questions you are supposed to ask what kind of questions you are not supposed to ask because if you ask wrong questions your entire research goes on toss because then user start answering in a very different fashion so maybe if you can install a camera for a day or something try to see observe everything and then you can learn from that data you can drill down on the data you 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 came across from that video and go and ask further questions i think that kind of process will help you yeah for the questions I, questions i have a book actually the mom test it was really good uh, so for the questions it was okay like they just didn't ask us for uh, doing mechanic they asked us for agriculture medical science and you also know this uh, right like when uh, for doctors uh, if uh, like if the patient is uh, suffering from a disease like uh, cancer and uh, the doctors they actually discover that and the patient doesn't know that so uh, do- they, the doctors told us that when we have to disclose the uh, uh, disease to them like they they were they have this particular disease so when when they do that the patients will be like uh, really depressed and the doctors they face it too hard to actually take it in like the doctors they take a lot of uh, stress because of that, that it seems the mm-hmm. patients will be like some will be crying most of them will be crying and yeah. all that so yeah, how I do you think, think that thing can be yeah i think for, for that you need to talk to psychologist uh, be, because a psychologist can help you uh, uh, understanding like what kind of mindset people are then being a doctor and also being a patient and i'm sure th- uh, like what you learn from psychologist what you learn from also if you can talk to patients who have been discovered with uh, any such serious disease like what was their experience when it was first told what is usually the experience of doctor when they tell what is the baggage they carry back at home right so if you start mapping all of this i think a psychologist can help you in d- deriving a better solution here yeah yeah got it anyone else on common problems and scenarios with design or myths and assumptions about design yeah hi ankur uh, first of all the session was amazing uh, thank you so much for coming uh, it was awesome Uh, so one uh, question that i had was uh, regarding uh, how companies design for scale uh, that is you know for companies such as microsoft and uh, like the, your company how do they design for scale or like for such yeah. organizations yeah it's a very good question actually so when you are designing for scale it's very important to be first of all really very sure about the change uh and if you have realized that the change is real and needed then don't step back but a good way to do it is divide it in phases so for example say i have to uh i have to change search experience in outlook right so i will divide the phase into a, a super minimum uh, change to a say level 2 change to a level 3 change and level 4 change right to keep adding uh things here and there experience here and there which will also involve change in database change in background change in uh, uh the back end right so that way what happens say for example uh i just make a minimum difference in the real, in the current system 
and what if my concept is completely useless right it's not realistic then in the very small change which i bring in the system i am i uh, uh, like learning from the users learning from the telemetry i get to understand whether it is going to work or not and whether i should proceed in the same direction or not right so you have to create those small section of experiments and then you uh, ship those small small changes learn from the changes and keep keep improving till you reach your final target final experience target which often is also called not star or final experience or anything like that so that way you can you can design for scale without damaging the current experience of the user and with minimum risk uh, thank you for answering that that was that cleared my okay thank you okay then i think we can wrap up the session uh, wow. thank you so much ankur for this insightful session i'm sure that the audience would have uh, learned a lot we're looking forward to collaborating with you in the future again and uh, thank you everybody for joining in uh, wish you a great day ahead thank you anjana for arranging this thank you so much for making time out of your busy schedule and coming here for us today thank you so yeah. much